Welcome to Build Your Maverick Business, the podcast for underdog, outlier, and renegade entrepreneurs. Brought to you by Strange Creative Studio. If you dream of going off on your own and launching your rebel empire, but don't know where to start, you're in the right place. We'll teach you how to use mindset, branding, and practical advice to build a killer business and transform your world. And now, here's your host, founder of Strange, Alex Pitt. All right, all right, welcome back. Guys, I'm in my element. It's finally chilly. I am recording this wearing basically all of Joe's clothes because his clothes are cosier than mine. And we have a rule in this house, which is that if I'm going to do most of the laundry, which I did this week, I did most of the washing. If I wash it, I get to wear it. So here I am kitted out in my fiance's trackies and hoodie, having the time of my life. Thank you very much. And Joe very much does kindly oblige to me stealing his stuff sometimes because he's a really nice man. He puts up with a lot of shit from me, I must admit. I am a bit of a brat sometimes. <laughs> I can be a bit of a brat. One of the many ways that I'm like that, right, one of the many ways that I'm a bit bratty is that I really, really hate being told what to do. It's probably why I run my own business, to be honest. <laughs> I hate being told what to do. It drives me mad. Too much of an independent soul, me. Too much of a maverick, if you like. And what I've realised recently, I say recently, what I know to be true about myself is that I am the worst with this. When I am already planning on doing something and then someone tells me to do the thing that I was already planning on doing. You know, like if you know that you need to do the dishes and you're just about to do it and then someone says, oh, can you go and sort out the dishes? And you think, well, no, I'm not fucking doing it now. <laughs> Is that just me? Am I an arsehole? I might have to put this to Reddit and see what they say. No, I know that this is not just me because I've seen memes about it. There is something in our psychology. There's something in our subconscious brains that when we feel pressured, right, when somebody is telling us that we should do something and we don't feel that we have autonomy over it, we don't feel like it's our own decision, then something in our brain kicks off a little bit and we rebel and we're like, nah, not doing it now. I mean, there's an entire film about this, right? About the stubbornness of people and how we have to have something be our own idea or not doing it. You've seen Inception. How many fucking levels deep did they have to go to convince that fella that that was his idea? Was it Killian Murphy? It's been a while since I've seen that film. But right, the, that guy, it had to be his idea that he was gonna, I can't remember what it was now, but they went full science fiction shit. For, like that film was far too long if you ask me because they're going a dream within a dream within a dream within a dream. Just to plant this seed, to convince this guy that he had an idea and it wasn't that somebody else was telling him to do it. So there you go, it's not just me. We all have a certain level of feeling like we're being backed into a corner or pressured to do things. If the person who's insisting on it is being a little bit too pushy and if we suddenly feel like we're losing control over the situation. Now this brings me onto the subject of this week's podcast. Again, always has something to do with business, it always comes back to business. And before I get into it, I wanna do a bit of a visualization. Okay, we're gonna do a little bit of a we need to imagine a couple of scenarios and I'm going to walk you through them. Now imagine you're in a lovely little village, say you're on holiday, let's, let's say we're in France, why the fuck not? We're making it up as we go along. So we're in France, <laughs> you're on holiday, you're walking through a lovely little village, very peaceful day, birds are singing, it's early morning, hustle and bustle of the town and you're just walking through this little cobbled street and you think to yourself, oh I'm quite hungry, I quite fancy a pastry and there's a lot of places to choose from on this little cobbled street that you're walking down. So you have a little, have a little gander down, have a little look around and you spot a bakery where you smell it before you see it, you feel, oh damn, here we go. So you start to make a little beeline for this bakery. The smell is drawing you in. It looks beautiful. There's a little queue of people in there, so you can tell that this is a place that people want to be. You catch the eye of the fella behind the counter, going about his day with his little apron on. Everything about it has drawn you in. It's attracted you. There's a smell of delicious coffee in the air. The pastries, oh God, the pastries. There's macaroons, there's all sorts. And you have a little browse along the counter. You take your time, and when you're ready, you place your order. The man behind the counter is only too happy to oblige. He gives you your croissant, he gives you a little macaroon with a wink and a smile, and he gives you a nice coffee. And off you go. 
you were drawn into this place and you have left with something that is going to make you happy, that you wanted to exchange your money for, and you go about your day. All right, rewind, back to the beginning, and we're walking down this. Honestly, the production values of this podcast. You're walking down the same street. Again, you've got a bit of a craving for a pastry. And so you start to pick out your bakery. Now you're walking past and you see a bakery with a fella stood outside and he's got free samples. You sort of make a little bit of a meander over again. And this guy's making solid fucking eye contact with you the whole time. Now you're already on edge because you don't like this. It's a bit bit too full on and he sort of shouts at you from a few yards away hi would you like to try some of this pastry and you're just like oh it's already a bit much now but you're already there he's already looking at you so you think yeah go on then i'll have my free bit of pastry yeah yeah no that's nice that's nice yeah we've got a two for one offer today so you can have now he's selling at you he's selling he's selling it's too late you start to walk away slowly but he starts shouting offers after you you start to quicken your pace he's coming (laughs) he's following you down the street Please, madame, monsieur, come back, come back. We've got this offer. We've got this today. We've got all of this stuff. Come and buy my pastry. Now, he was selling the same stuff as the last bakery. The smell was just as delicious. If the experience had been better, you probably would have bought the same value of stuff from that guy. But instead of drawing you in with the allure of everything that he had to offer, he chased you the fuck down. Suddenly that purchasing decision isn't yours. It's being pressured on you. Now, I obviously exaggerate both of those situations (laughs) because it's me and it wouldn't be build your maverick business if I weren't a bit fucking silly. However, if there's one of many things I've learned about selling over these last few years, this one is very true, right? This is universally true. People like to buy, but they don't like to be sold to. Now, I've been watching this show recently, which is actually the inspiration for this week's podcast, White Gold on Netflix. It is, if you haven't seen it, it's, I think, by the makers of The Inbetweeners. It's got two of the guys from The Inbetweeners in it. And it's about double glazing salesmen in the 1980s. The stereotypes are off the charts. It is hilarious, but they are just pure. Like if you had to come up with the stereotype of a salesman, this is what it is. A bit icky, won't take no for an answer, won't even get up and go to the toilet in case you get a chance to talk to your spouse and agree that this isn't something that you want. And I think this is why selling gets such a bad reputation because it's that pushing, it's the aggression, it's the coming at it from one side instead of drawing in your audience, attracting them, nurturing them, seducing them if you like. This counts for everything, right? For buying pastries, for dating, (laughs) for human connection in general. As soon as people start to feel that pressure and feel like they don't have the autonomy, they switch off and they want to run away. This is something that I've experienced quite a lot actually, especially in kind of communities, networks and groups. If you post that there is something that you're interested in or could anyone recommend this thing that I need for my business right now. The second that you show any kind of interest in some sort of product or service, suddenly the motherfuckers drop into your friendship requests or your inbox. Hi, hi, I see that you're looking for da 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 da. I'm currently running a five day masterclass for this thing, that thing that I'm currently offering a they jump straight into the selling. They are the dude with the pastries chasing you down the fucking road. (laughs) And I just block them. It's so annoying. (laughs) Now I'm gonna offer another option for this, right? Obviously, if you're running an online business, you cannot rely on the smell of pastries and coffee (laughs) drifting out of your customers' browsers to draw them in. But this episode actually follows on really nicely from last week. So last week we talked about entertaining your audience, right? Giving them something beyond just, here, let me teach you, or here, are my offers, here are my products. You make them feel a certain way and then they've already made an emotional decision about how they feel about you. They've drawn a positive conclusion about you. If you just happen to pop an offer in there somewhere that they can find on their own very easily, you are giving them the power to decide. You are giving them the power to buy instead of selling to them. Have you ever been on one of those walking tours? around cities where the tour itself is completely free they give you like three hours worth of really interesting information and a little walk around the town but they at the end say we do take donations so please give us whatever you think this is worth fuck me do those guys clean up (laughs) 
The reason being that they're offering so much value before they're asking for anything in return. Now, if you run a service-based business, you can just create something that hooks people in, whether it be a bit of storytelling, a bit of a joke, something beautiful to look at. You know, if you're a product-based business, do some cool fucking reels that people just get hooked on and get interested in. Entertain them, step one. But step two, the crucial one, if you actually wanna convert those customers, is to then leave an offer on the table. Don't thrust it at them. <laughs> Don't chase them down the road screaming it at them. Leave it there on the counter for them to find. It's so much more empowering for those customers or clients to feel empowered to make that decision on their own. Remember, draw them in, attract them, seduce them. Don't be chasing them down. That's it from me for this week. I'll catch you here next time. If you love what you're hearing in this podcast, but you are still yet to start that rebel empire of your own, I've got something that might help. Head over to the show notes of this episode where you will find a free seven step action plan to kickstarting your first side hustle. It's got pretty pictures, it's got activities. What more could you want, my loves? Get it downloaded, try it out, let me know how you get on.